G'day folks. Oh, I did a bit, of, a bit of work at the yard today. There wasn't an awful lot around, so no video there. Uh, there was an overhead valve, Briggs and Stratton, but they pulled pretty much everything off the outside. Although the internals were all right, it seems. Valve still worked, had compression. It was missing everything, including the flywheel, so that was just useless. But, um, right now I'm just tackling projects which are taking up space because they're in pieces. Starting with the Westinghouse, I got a bit done last night. Got two more poles in and insulation glued behind them. It's a pain in the ass getting insulation like this stuff in as a single piece, but since it's only just required as a spacing in there, I decided to cut them and jam them in after the bolts were in. Uh, a bit of silicon and other sealant on that too. Uh, acetal spaces down behind the poles, like this but without the hole in them. I'm making new acetal bushings to go inside here and I'll use these acetal spaces on the outsides and insides. So that's coming along nicely. Got my old wiring diagram. And the last thing that came in for the day at the scrapyard, something that Brad will like. He gave him the motor from one of these to rewind and unfortunately I haven't figured out which way it's supposed to be rewound. Uh, but we've got a good motor here. And the guy who dropped it off said it needed bearings and judging by the amount of overspray that's gone through this thing, yeah, it's kind of understandable. My guess is they painted the wall while the fan was running and it's just sucked up all the dust and crap and clagged itself up. The Tech Pro brand. Maximum speed 1400 RPM. 30 inch, 750 millimeter diameter. So it's a pretty decent one. It's got a die cast, three bladed uh, impeller. Uh, 240 volts. No manufacturer's info apart from the brand name, which is Tech Pro, but it just looks like a generic Chinese pedestal fan with the optional wall bracket. The other ones come with a heavy pedestal base, which accepts the same motor assembly. So let's put some power to it and see how noisy this thing is. He said it was just clunking and clattering and carrying on. it's a bearing. Hmm. Let's pull this thing apart and have a look. Yeah, just one last show. That almost sounds like the rotor is separated from the shaft. The shaft is spinning alright. I wonder if the uh, laminated rotor for the electric motor is actually separated and freewheeling and then jamming and spinning the shaft a little bit. Only, t only time I've ever seen that happen before is on a big disc grinder at, a, at the foundry I used to work for. It's maybe a 5 horsepower 3 phase motor and the guy was just complaining about the disc stopping as soon as he put the uh, workpiece to it. And I went out there and sure enough you put the workpiece to it the motor's still running but the disc ain't spinning. So when I pulled it apart I found the rotor had come off the uh, come loose from the shaft and it was still spinning but the shaft wasn't the only time I've ever seen that so let's find out what's going on inside yeah, this thing might have had overheating issues in summertime that's a lot of dust <laughs> and the motor's different to this one here which is Brad's it's for a fan he got it's had a rather nasty burnout and I showed a motor rewind guy and he just sort of ummed and ahed and said, asked me how much I want to spend on it. So yeah, it might be a little bit too far gone, considering that's all burnt off and even in there is burnt. I'm thinking this is a rewind job, not just try and patch this up, because that's all beaten and burnt through to the windings. But if the stator from this one is the same, well we might be able to do something. I don't mind parting this one out if the rest of it's wrecked, but yeah, I'll, try and, I'll talk to him and we'll find out what's going on. Might be able to make one good one out of the two. Alright, 
Oh, I think we got lucky with this one. The rotor is definitely still attached to the shaft, but the fan blade isn't. I think it's just a stuck fan blade. Oh, sorry, not stuck, loose. Now I'm turning that, and the fan blade's staying still. There's the problem. Oh, look, it's worked its way off the shaft. You can see that black spot where it used to be. <laughs> Oh, I love when people throw things out without trying to fix them. <laughs> See now, there's the problem. That's why it's making a racket. <laughs> the bearings in it are silky smooth. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a nice die cast fan too. It doesn't run very concentric and that's probably why it works loose. A bit of vibration and that screws uh, yeah, sort of moving. They probably lock tighted it at the factory, but it's all just worked its way loose again from vibration. Being China stuff, they don't put much effort into, into balancing. And you can see the groove where the screw's meant to bear on. It's just worked loose, that's all. The bore's a bit flogged out, but a bit of lock tight bearing fit will fix that. Pretty mean little fan blade too, it's a nice die cast one. Definitely not plastic. I want to repaint it too. I'll do a test run just to make sure the motor's still alright, clean all the dust out. And then I'll get some black epoxy enamel. They've got tons of green though. I don't know if green would suit an industrial fan. It'll probably look good though. I've got a tiny bit of black left maybe for the fan blade and then do the rest in green. Black and green would look alright. Okay, it turns out the screw's a bit stripped. As soon as I get a bit of pressure on it, I can feel it slip. So they've over-threaded the uh, hole, or drilled it too big, something like that. It's just wrecked the threads in it. So I'm going to have to drill and tap that a larger size. Not hard to do. But for now, let's test her out. Alright, let's see how this thing works now that the blade's properly attached. Much better. Fine. That's just not. <laughs> oh, well, I'll take the blade and everything off and might get some gloss black again. Stick with the original colour scheme. It'd probably look alright in green and black, but I don't have much black 
left at the moment and it's going to probably take a couple of days for me to get some black in. So that's all for now and stay tuned for a quick clean up and respray video on this one.